Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Down to Earth with Harriet Kamek. Thank you so much for joining us. If my voice is a little out of whack today, well, put it down to having had a good day yesterday. How many of us had a good day Monday? I had an excellent day on Monday. I mean, I went to next. I went to look at a venue for an event that we have coming up on next Tuesday in Brighton, Michigan. And I kid you not, that day totally relaxed me. I thank God for having good friends in your life who see something good in you and who encourage you and motivate you and keep you. My friend Linda took good care of me. We ended up going to uh, somewhere to eat. And I had the time of my life. I just sat there and just allowed myself to linger in the presence and to linger in not having to worry about anything. Everything just left and I was just fine. So I had a good day on Monday, which was a setup, <laughs> which was a good thing. It was a setup. And my day just continued on Tuesday. I mean, on uh, Monday evening, I was fine. I was quite relaxed. Despite the traffic, despite the commute. This is why the commute saying so shout out to everybody who has to deal with a commute. How many of us have to deal with a commute? Oh, sucks major. Well, today on our show, we're going to talk about the po politics in your relationship. What happens when you and your partner support different political ideologies? Don't laugh at me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't want to talk about that today and hopefully give you some insight. So as we go through this, treacherous political season you'll get some insight so for those of us who are in the metro detroit area next tuesday say next tuesday next tuesday at 6 p.m in the evening in brighton michigan i will be speaking on the intersectionality of human trafficking and immigration so make sure you come out and join us it will take place at the homewood suites on chalice road Homewood Suites on Chalice Road in Brighton, Michigan. Make sure you come on out and join us. We'll post the link. It's already on Facebook. So I'm going to post the link to Facebook and Twitter so the rest of you can see it. So if you want to be a part of it, you certainly are welcome to come out and be a part of what we're going to do, right? right? I want you all to come out and join with us as we talk about the intersection of of human trafficking and immigration. Life is filled with intersections, right? And sometimes some of the issues that confront us happen at a vortex. Well, that vortex is called an intersection. And so we have to, we tend to look at an issue from one side of the spectrum. But what about the whole picture? And sometimes we don't look at the whole picture. We tend to just look at it from one side. Well, there is, a, there is another viewpoint. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow, right? Uh, next Tuesday. So there's a lot of stuff going on here in the Metro Detroit area. Everybody knows GM is on strike. Well, I just saw a report on the Detroit News, I think it was, that if GM continues to strike for more than a week, it will send the Michigan economy into, into a recession. We can't do recession, people. So whatever GM needs to do. So I want you all to tweet General Motors at GM. Fix this so G uh, Michigan doesn't go into recession. Like, God, can we get a break? Like, it, we just got out of that stuff. Who wants a recession? So come on, GM, fix it. You made $8 billion in profits last year. Give the people some of the money. Instead of you all taking it on flying private jets out of that uh, airport over in... Uh, in Highland, Highland, Michigan, right? It's, it's high, off high, on Highland Road in Waterford, Michigan. That's where you all fly out from, right? All the executives from GM, that's where they fly out from. They're so important. They don't even take Metro Airport. And they certainly don't go to Flint. And they don't go to the city airports on Mac and Connor. They fly out from Highland, Michigan because they're too important to be touched. The regular people can't touch them. So the folks at General Motors, the people who run General Motors... You know, you self-important people who sit in ivory towers up there and think that the world does not exist unless you woke up this morning. I have news for you. You know, there was someone else who occupied that seat, right? And someone else before that person, etc., etc. So you're just another wheel in the cog. You might just be on a higher end of the cog, but if you have to fall, you're still going to fall, dude. And do that. So I want everybody to go 
tell GM, tweet General Motors, fix this. We can't afford for Michigan to go into recession. We can't do that. It needs to be, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. You made $8 billion last year. You can fix this. I normally support General Motors, but in this one thing, not when you made $8 billion last year, give the workers what they want. Give them something. Come back to the table and give them something. And you don't want Donald Trump getting involved in this because we already know how he feels about General Motors, right? All right. So you don't want you don't want Donald Trump involved in this. Matter of fact, don't tempt me. I might go call somebody and tell them to tell Trump to get involved in it. Don't tempt me, <laughs> right? Don't tempt me. Don't, don't 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 let me make enough noise so it gets to their attention, right? General Motors, fix this. Gosh, can we get a break? Like, if you were to live, if you live anywhere in the Metro Detroit area and see what has happened here, the renaissance that has happened here since 2008, you'd understand what I'm talking about. You'd understand how desperate we are for us not to go into a recession. You'd understand. I mean, literally, we came back from nothing. Downtown Detroit was a ghost town. Downtown Detroit was so jacked up. You, We didn't do... As, we didn't even, at the time, I lived in, uh, where did I, I think I lived in Southfield. And I kid you not, we didn't even drive through downtown Detroit. You didn't go there because it was filled with homeless people. It was filled with, it was a derelict place. I mean, the buildings were tattered and broken down, broken bottles on the street, no street lights. I kid you not. It was like a ghost town. It was like everybody had abandoned Michigan and abandoned Detroit. So when I tell you that General Motors does not need, does not need to allow the strike to go on for more than a week, believe me, I'm passionate about it. Detroit is, has become just like another great American city. It has revived. There's work every on every block. There's construction on every other block. There's a new building and a new facility going up, right? So we definitely... When I say we definitely, we definitely don't need, a, we don't, we don't need a recession. We don't need a recession. So are you with me? I need everybody to go tweet General Motors and tell them what? Tell them fix this so that the workers, so that the workers can get their money. Why? Because General Motors made $8 billion last year. They they can fix this. Say, fix this. Fix this, GM. Fix it. Fix it, General Motors. Matter of fact, pick up your phones right now, everybody. Yeah, while you're watching me on air, I want you all to go to General Motors. I want you all to go to Twitter. I'm doing it right now, and I'm telling General Motors to what? Fix it. General Motors, fix this. Fix it, General Motors. There we go. There we go. At GM at General Motors. Fix it. You think I'm joking? Fix it. Fix it. Michigan cannot go through another... Uh-huh. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. Michigan cannot go through another... through another reception. Another recession if the current strike continues. Continues. For more than a week. Give the workers what they want. What they want. What they want. You made $8 billion last year. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm not joking with these people. $8 billion last year. Last year. Right? Fix it. GM fix it. And I'm telling the mayor of the city of Detroit at Mayor Mike Dugan. Nobody wants a recession in Detroit. Okay? Nobody wants. Say that. Oh, y'all thought I was joking, right? I'm not even waiting. At Mayor Mike Dugan. Fix it. I'm, I, I kid you not. I kid you not, I'm, I'm, I'm tweeting them because I'm serious about this, right? Because what happens is we can't go through another recession, right? Fix it. 
So, so you see now why I say the politics of our relationship? Because imagine if you are, let me see who, who, who else is on here. Y'all are with me, right? Uh, imagine if, if you and your partner are on different sides of the political spectrum. So you're a Republican and they're dem Democrat. What do you think goes on in your house? <laughs> you disagree. You already disagree on fundamental ideologies. I don't even know how you got together. <laughs> That's interesting in and of itself. But suffice it to say, now that you're here and you have to live together, you're just hoping your relationship survives another treacherous, um, how shall I say this, another treacherous uh, election season, right? Am I joking? Isn't, is that not true, right? Because the truth of the matter is, how, are you, how is your relationship going to survive uh, this, this current time? I mean, think about it. We allow politics is so infused into our everyday activities. Why wouldn't it go into our relationships? Well, how do you navigate these things? How do you get from there to there? Well, that's entirely up to you. I mean, you can you can do some things like you can say, well, we're not going to talk about politics in the bedroom. Boom. Start right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you shut that door. OK, so you can say we're not going to talk about politics in the living room, <laughs> right? Okay, we're going somewhere. You can say we're not going to talk about politics in the kitchen, <laughs> right? You can say we're not going to talk about politics in the dining room. You can also say we're not going to talk about politics in the family room, not in the bathroom, not in the garage, in the garage, and definitely not in the car. So the only time you can talk about politics is when you're texting each other. <laughs> you know what that does? Especially if you're standing on different sides of the aisle. You know what that does? That sets you up <laughs> so that you never, ever disagree in the places that are sacred to you. The places that are sacred to you are where? Your home, right? Right. Your home, your living room, your dining room, definitely the bedroom, the bathroom, right? You probably share a bathroom. You might have his and hers mirrors or his and her sink, but you still definitely share. But so you don't talk about politics. So you don't watch Fox and you definitely don't watch CNN together because that will drive you crazy. So if you're Republican, you're going to watch Fox. And if you're Democrat, you're going to watch CNN and MS and definitely don't turn on MSNBC. You are going to kill each other. So the, as politics impacts our relationships, what we have to do is to make sure that we don't, that we absolutely do not, we don't let that become a part of our everyday relationship. You, we have to maintain the integrity of such, because what I'm finding is that if you, you can become so passionate that your passion, ex, it, it gets translated into different things in life. Suddenly, even your decision-making becomes political. Well, you think that way because you're a liberal. You think that way because that's what Bernie Sanders thinks. You think that way because that's what Elizabeth Warren says. Or you think that way because that's what Mitch McConnell thinks. Or you think that way because that's what all, you know, all old white men with snow hair thinks. And you, before you know it, before you know it, it starts deteriorating and denigrating and it becomes personal. Well, isn't that what your dad thinks about me? Well, isn't that what your mom said? Your mom is a fundamentalist Christian, isn't she? And then it just goes south from there. And it just keeps going south and south and south. And suddenly things that never mattered before become magnified. So <laughs> if it were me, this is just what I say. If it were me, if it were me, I would say what? Don't even touch the subject. Just let it be. Don't, don't, don't touch it. Don't talk about politics, rule politics out. Because the, the, the fact of the matter is that politics is going to become what it is. Politics is becoming more and more, uh, it's contentious anyway. It's just like talking about religion. There are two things that no couple should ever really, really, really start an argument about. Politics and religion, because it never ends, <laughs> especially if you disagree, because you can say, I agree to disagree. And then you're like, no, you didn't go there. That was a low blow. Don't say that. No, that's not true. It's contentious. So stay away from it. 
And, but it's also important if, if your partner supports a different ideology than you do, it probably is based on some sound reasoning that they have that might not be yours. Isn't it true? Right. So it's probably some sound reasoning they have that might not be yours, but guess what you're going to do? You're going to go on and on about it anyway. You're, you're liking this because it's true. It's true. You're nodding your head, right? So they're going to support things that you don't even think about. But, but think about it. Why are they Republican? Did you grow up that way? Or is it some thought process that influenced you, right? Because I'm, you know, in my family, well, I'm kind of the outsider, so we won't talk about me, right? Because from the get-go, you already know, right? I would support a different, I would say something different, and they're just going to say whatever else is the opposite just to say, right? And even sometimes when you might agree on some fundamentals, there are some things that are common that we all agree on loving America, right? We all agree on that. We just display it in a different way. We all agree that homeland, America, needs to be protected and should be protected regardless, right? And at some point, in a very deep and practical way, all of us felt like if it comes down to defending the democracy and what we believe in, oh, we would lay our lives down in a minute. No hands down. So that's a given. But the execution of those ideas, well, that's why it's called politics. Because guess what you do? You're going to disagree on the execution. You're going to disagree on the details. For instance, you look at the current uh, the current situation right now with the Democrats. I think they're stupid and silly like it's unbelievable. Like seriously, they have one candidate who is, who is perhaps the best candidate that they could put forward for a presidential election. And they had a debate the other day where they were beating him up. Did that make sense? That's, that's, that was so silly and beyond reason because none of the other people, no matter what they did to Biden, they could never beat, they can't beat him in a general election. So why are you beating him up? Because do, is it about your party or is it about you and your own beliefs? So I think the Democrats are silly. Now switch over to the Republicans. They're in the White House. You know how they look at it? We're going to keep the White House at any cost. So they rally behind the guy in the White House, like fundamental. Republicans believe in party. They put the party above all else. The Democrats, they're over here fighting. And while they're fighting, things are going to pot. They're picking a fight with Biden. And I'm like, dude, you're going to need Biden down the line anyway. So what's the point? The Republicans don't take that hit or miss stuff. They're like, this is the guy, this is the best candidate we have for the job. This is who we're going to rally behind and support. So they send their soldiers out to get on the same bandwagon. So wherever you go in the Republican Party across the country, their platform is the same. They say the same things. The Democrats, oh, they vary. Uh, One minute it's impeach, one minute, no, we're not going to impeach. One minute, no, it's impeach, Kavanaugh, we're not going to impeach. So imagine all these contentious ideas taking place in your house. That's a hell house. <laughs> you you start sounding like the talking heads on CNN and MSNBC. Can't agree on nothing. <laughs> you see what I mean? So don't even start the politics in there. Don't, don't, don't start it. Don't, don't bring it in. Right? Leave it. Like I said, it doesn't go in the garage. So I'm setting up the boundaries where the politics will end in your relationship. It's not going to the garage. It's not in the car because if you drive together, you're going to go crazy, (laughs) right? It's not in the house. It's not in the laundry room. It's not in the kitchen. It's not in the basement. I forgot about that. There are some houses with basements if you live in some parts of the country, right? So it's not in the basement. It's not in the kitchen, not the living room, not the family room, not the dining room. And it's not in the bedroom. All the other rooms, there are all variations of those So no, it's none of that. It's not on the stairwell. It's not in the house, period. That means you are leaving politics out of your relationship. Just understand that you're going to disagree and that more than likely your candidate is going to act the tomfool, right? Like the Democrats are doing. They're just pure tomfoolery. Like it's just total silly. Don't you think so? It's silly, isn't it? 
very silly. Meanwhile, the Republicans on the other hand are like, we're riding it out. <laughs> we're riding it out. And the Democrats are nitpicking, nitpicking, nitpicking on the one good candidate that they have. Don't let that be a metaphor for your relationship. It's just like your relationship, right? You have a relationship that might not be perfect. Your relationship might not, it might not be everything that you want it to be. We, we become so obsessed with perfection. We think that all of life must be a fairy tale and hunky dory all the time. It's not always going to be that way. If you want something good in life, I have found in my experience that you have to fight for it. You have to go for it. You have to work hard at it. And more often than not, it takes effort. There are mountains that you have to climb and valleys you have to get through and streams and rivers that you have to cross. And what happens is none of that is easy. You have to carry burdens and pick up burdens and carry burdens. And people stand in your way and there are giants in the path and there are obstacles. And you need a giant slayer until you become the giant slayer yourself. That's a relationship. It's not easy. But if both of you love each other and are committed to the goal of staying together and being the best partner for each other, then you can make it. The problem is people don't have a goal for their relationship. They don't know what it is they want to achieve. Are we together because it's a tax situation? Are we together because you don't have anywhere else to go and based you can't get a job and you don't have you don't have income so you have to live here? You have to identify or are we together because we love each other and we want to be with one another. Sometimes people get together because it's convenient and expedient. You're married to this person so it helps you where you work right? Marriage gives you stability. So it helps you on your upward climb through the corporate ladder. But when you get to the top, you plan to shake it and do what you want to do. People make, so what is the reason for you being together in the first place? Are you together because you love? Then if that is your goal, because you want to stay together, you want to keep your assets together, you want to grow older together. Then if that's your goal, then that's something to work forward, isn't it? That's something to look forward to. That's something to work towards. So you're going to go through a process to eliminate the things that become a hindrance to that relationship. And you're going to identify them, conquer them, and move them out of the way. Well, politics is one of them. Politics is just one of many things that are in your relationship. But it's a big deal nonetheless. <laughs> right? So you stop watching Fox and you stop watching CNN and MSNBC. And you don't read some, some, you know, some periodicals like the New York Times or Washington Post, etc. The LA Times, because there is going to be a headline that is going to grab your attention. And you certainly stay off the more contentious subjects of the day, right? To keep your relationship going. I find today that people don't have a goal for their relationship. They don't know why they're together. And because they don't know why they're together, they don't know the what for. They don't know what to look out for. They don't know how to avoid the pitfalls. Because frankly, if you don't know why you're together, you're not even committed to it. And that is why you see, it's part of the reason why you see so many people ending up in divorce and so many people ending up uh, it losing everything because they don't even know why they're together. Why did you even get together? Because the sex was good? Or did you get together for some other altruistic, intrinsic reason like, the family put pressure on you. How many people are in relationships because your family put pressure on you to be in a relationship? Just raise your hand. No, th there's no shame in the game, right? How many people ended up with someone whom the family placed pressure on you to be with, but you can't stand them and you hate the relationship and hate yourself and you're completely miserable? Plenty of people, right? Most of you are like, wow, that's deep. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Know that you're in that relationship. You have to start figuring out, well, what is it that I wanted? You have to figure out what did you want in the first place? And how does this person satisfy what you want? Because you're not going to leave them just because that's what your family wants. You're going to figure out, well, was this good for me? Did this work for me? And in terms of the big picture, how does it work for what I want? Do you see what I'm saying? Because sometimes they might push you to marry someone and you think you love the girl over there, but the girl over there would have probably cheated on you and left you, or the guy over there would have left you and, and made you bear up, but that's what you want. I kid you not. That's why some of us believe in arranged marriages. Say arranged marriages. I believe in them. 
I believe in arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. I believe I should arrange marriages for the people I love like my children. Because I think that we make better decisions than they would. They're going to choose someone whom they love right now. But is that someone who 10 years from now you're going to love? Think about that. When you're choosing a life partner, you have to ask yourself, am I willing to put up with everything that they are that will become apparent in 10 years? Ask yourself that question. Some of us take on people who have histories that we don't know. They have some baby mama drama history somewhere. They have a history of other stuff. Are you willing to put up with that? Because here's the thing. There are some of the things that are going to intrude in your relationship. Politics is just one of many. You can't obviate it. It's on the radio. It's on the TV. You know, you can say, well, I'm not going to talk about it in certain of my home spaces and our, in our private spaces. But it is there. You, you're going to ask yourself, did you register to vote? Are you going to vote? I don't know. Say anything to me. Oh, well, it's that kind of day, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> So who are you going to buy? Oh, and you're like, okay, so maybe we shouldn't talk to you today. Do you see what I'm saying? So it, it's going to intrude and be insidious and find its way into your relationship. Don't try to argue the, the final points of the argument either. Don't try to convince your spouse because that's not your fight. That's not the place to fight. You have enough in your relationship to work out. There are enough issues to worry about. He didn't put the toilet cover down. She never puts the, the toothpaste cover back on. For crying out loud, you leave dishes in the sink at night. I don't like dishes left in the sink. He doesn't take the trash out, so the garbage always smells. Then it's trash day and he forgets to take the trash out. Stuff happens. Or there's a drip in the tap in my bathroom and I asked you know bathroom and I asked you to fix it and you haven't gotten around to it and he's like call the plumber and she's like why should we go spend ninety dollars and call the plumber when you can just fix it just use a screwdriver and screw it back in how do you know it's a screwdriver that he needs because I feel like it's just a little thing that's little. well how do you know did you look at it well if you look at it why can't you fix it and then you start arguing do you see now why you don't need politics in that that's just adding to one of your many issues because politics are contentious as it is. I mean, you're going to argue about Beto O'Rourke, right? What is he thinking? What is he not thinking? You're going to argue about Bernie Sanders' uh, wild idea of how that's going to be implemented. I, I love how they all have ideas. And I'm like, in the big scheme of things, how is that going to work? It just sounds good. No, we want the, pe the people want deliverables. Right? So you're looking at it and so there you are arguing, well, your, your guy is an idiot. How is that going to be implemented? And then you have Elizabeth Warren over there. She wants Medicare for all. And this is you, huh? Well, what's wrong with Medicare for all? My parents are on Medicare. Someday we're going to be on Medicare. We need Medicare for all. Blah, 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 blah. And before you know it, you have a full scale blown argument. You don't need that. You have enough to argue about. Because think about it. You got to go figure out how to pay the light bill, the gas bill, the food bill. The kids uh, have to pay daycare to plan money, save money for vacation next year. Well, where are we going to go for Thanksgiving and Christmas? Are we going to go to the family? I don't want to go to your family this year. See, that's what you need to talk about. Those are the issues that you need to talk about in your relationship. Don't let politics be one of them. Right? Right. So go to harrykamick.com and go to the exodusfoundation.com for more information on the stuff that we talk about. Thanks so much. <laughs>